two and one. That's boogie. So frequency histograms. So I'm gonna try to give you um, an example and actually construct a frequency histogram. <clears throat> um, one of those histograms actually has a special name, so the cumulative one, Jive. So you see there, O, G, I, V, E. Okay, so I'm going to do that towards the end. Now, um, I do recommend that you try to understand kind of grouped, ungrouped um, class weights um, uh, behind these frequency histograms. So if you have forgotten that, you can watch the video. I'll put a link up above um, to that as I go through a, a couple of examples. In here, I'm not gonna explain where things are coming from. I'm just going to literally uh, create everything uh, related to the frequency histogram and then what's needed. So we have this data of 100 meter swimming times by 20 female swimmers. So it is all in seconds. So if you count it up, um, you know, you will get that 20. And what I want to do is I want to be able to create uh, a grouped frequency histogram for this particular data. And one of the first things that I need is I'm going to need to figure out my intervals um, from the class weight, which I'm going to calculate. So how do I calculate my class weight and then how many groups will I have? So I'm going to make the assumption that in here, I'm going to be working with this data and I'm going to have five groups in total. So that's going to be my number of groups and that's where my data points will fall. I'm going to try to find out what the interval is. So in order to find my class weight, so class weight, okay, it is equal to the highest minus the lowest. So highest minus the lowest data point divided by the number of groups. So in this particular example, so what that would be is, so if I scan through these, my highest one is 6182 and my lowest one is 5725. So I'm gonna do that subtraction, 61.82 minus 57.25. And then since I wanna have five groups, so I'm gonna take my answer divided by five, and that is my class weight. Now this particular class weight, 0.914 seconds as an interval would be kind of annoying, so I'm gonna round it up to one second. So this is going to have uh, one second uh, intervals that I'm gonna be dealing with. All right, so that's the first thing that I needed. So I need my class weight. Now I'm gonna construct my actual intervals. So my intervals for this, I'm gonna kind of visually show you that. So I have, so let's say, because my data point starts, my lowest one is from 57.25 and my class weight is one second. So I'm gonna have one second intervals. I'm gonna create my, my um, starting point basically from, so this right here, I'm gonna start it from 57 seconds. All right, so here are my, my intervals, okay, so that I have. So basically my first interval is gonna be between 57 and 58 seconds. My second interval is gonna be between 58 and 59 seconds and so on. Now I wanna be able to see which data points fall within these intervals, all right? So I'm going to check, so between 57 and 58, so I'm gonna match it up with the color. So that's gonna be here one and two. Those are the only ones that I have. So those are two, so I have basically a frequency of two there. And now I'm gonna do that between 58 and 59. So let me do all of those in, again, fast-paced motion, and then I'll come back and create a table of values for these, for the frequency, and I'll talk about relative frequency and then cumulative frequency as well. All right, so see you back shortly, okay, in fast-forward motion.
All right, so welcome back. Okay, so I have kind of color coded between my intervals. Now my intervals, I do have to create between 57 and 58. So what I will do here is, so now I'm gonna bring um, up this nice lovely chart here. So this table, and then I'll explain what these mean. All right, okay, so welcome back. Then a little bit of fast forward. So we have this table and notice that the intervals between 57 and 58, so I've created that. My first interval includes 57, but notice it does not include 58. So T is less than 58. And then consistently make sure that you do not have an interval which overlaps between each other. So for instance, don't do something like this in your intervals where you would have so sometimes people will do this and then they'll start the next one and notice that what they're doing is, okay, so here, these two means that the 58 would have been included in both. Now you might get lucky, I think we got lucky that no data points fell in between there, but if they did, then which interval would it go? So make sure that you do not have less or equal to on all your data points. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. The other aspect is that instead of writing, so 57, okay, for example, to this, what you're going to find that some um, mathematicians, statisticians, uh, researchers, so what they'll do is this, okay, is actually written in this way, can be written in a much shorter way, where we put a round bracket um, when it is does not include the equal to, and we put a square bracket, and this becomes our interval between 57, and it includes 57, but doesn't include 58. All right, so you can write your intervals that way. I'm gonna do that when I'm going to be doing the histograms. So that's just a deja vu for those who may have not remembered that. So now let's actually count up the frequencies. So frequency just means how many data points but fall in between that interval. So between 57 and 58, I can count that up. So there were two data points there. So here I had two data points. Between 58 and 59, we had one, two, three, four, five data points. Between 59 and 60, one, two, three, four, five, again, data points. And now between 60 and 61, one, two, three, four, five. So that's interesting. And then lastly, what do we have there? Um, two. So two data points at the end. Now let's make sure that we check the totals and add it all up. So we, it looks like we're missing one because we have five, 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 which is 15 and then 19. So I've missed one somewhere. So let's see which one did I miss. And so let's count it up. So we have two of those and then one, two, three, four, five, Five, okay, we missed here this one, 61.08. So this is the last one there. So that's a good check for ourselves. So this is three, so the total should be 20. Now, when you're filling out your table, your relative frequency, relative frequency is your percent. So whatever you have, okay, so for instance, you'll take this value right here, so two, then divided by 20, so two divided by 20, and of course times 100%, and that's gonna give you, so in this case it's 10%. And you will do that for every single um, uh, interval, all right? So let's do that in fast forward mode. All right, so there we have it. Now, of course, add it all up, make sure it adds up to 100 there. So 25, 25, 25, 75, um, plus the 15 is 90, plus 10 is 100. Now, cumulative frequency, so you have maybe have seen this already. Uh, you may recall kind of uh, Pareto charts. I can put a link up above to Pareto charts, okay, if you like. So in cumulative frequency, all we are doing is we are simply just adding up. So for instance, we started with 10%. 
Now we add, so the 25, so now it becomes 35%, okay, plus the 25, so that's going to be 60%, plus 25 is going to be 85%, plus 25 is equal to 100%. That's the cumulative frequency that we have, and again, this one is as a percentage point, okay, so as a percent out of 100 so now what do we do with this particular data? Well, now we can create our histogram. So our histogram basically has in our X axis, okay, the horizontal, it's going to have the interval, which is your variable that you're measuring. So in this case, it's the time that you have and you will create your intervals within. So we have five groups. So that's what we're gonna be creating there. And then on the vertical, okay, the first histogram that I'm gonna do is just frequency histogram. So I'm gonna take this column and then plot it accordingly, okay, going up, all right? Then we're gonna do one which just takes the relative frequency, and then we're gonna take the last one which is purely cumulative frequency, and that is called an ogive, okay? So let's do all three. So I'm gonna do the first one, okay? We'll do it in a speed up motion. Of course, I'm gonna skip your title, but you can put your title in there, all right? Okay, let's create it. All right, so welcome back. Okay, so that was, I know, in super fast motion. It took me a lot longer. <laughs> um, you know, you, you got a chance to see it in just a few seconds. So you put your frequency count on the left. That's why it's called a frequency and it's a histogram. So basically, it kind of looks like a bar graph that you have. Notice you have intervals at the bottom. So those are my groups that we have created. So here is, you know, your first group, your second group, your third group fourth group, and then your fifth group. And then you have your um, bar graphs, which are going, sorry, your, your bars, which are going up um, to the actual count that we had. So, and then you put on the horizontal, notice it's T in seconds. So that would be a plain frequency histogram, right? So that's just that second column. Now, what you can do is you can create a relative frequency histogram, and in order to do a relative frequency histogram, okay, so what you would do is instead of ha having a count on the left axis, you instead um, are utilizing the percents, all right? So you would basically put a percent value, okay, instead of a count value. So I'm gonna show you, okay, a little bit again in fast motion, okay, how that would look like. It's not gonna really change anything, except instead of counting, we're gonna be putting percents on the left. All right, okay, so this one was a lot faster for us. So there you go. So all I've done is I've just changed. Now this is called a relative frequency histogram. Okay, so it is relative with respect to the percents. Okay, so that's how we would do that. Now the last one that we do is we do a cumulative frequency histogram. So instead of putting this one, okay, we're going to be concentrating on that. And that is called, okay, an ogive, okay. Um, that's another term that sometimes is used and thrown around. So let me construct this one and then you'll see how this is done. We do not use bars at all. We're going to be um, using something a little bit different, all right? So let me do that in fast forward motion. All right, okay, so I've kind of adjusted these, so those intervals, as you can see, it's almost, you know, kind of looks like 
you have a timeline there so from 57 all the way on and it continues and now we're going to do the cumulative frequencies all right so we basically are going to be pointing so notice at 57 you know we start really at zero percent we didn't have anything now by 58 so within that interval we know that we're going to be okay around 10 percent so this we put basically a plot here so about 10 percent there then okay it's 35 percent by 59 so 35 percent which is going to be somewhere here by the next interval by 60 we're at 60 percent so here we're going to go right at 60 at 61 we're at 85 percent so that's going to be right there and then at 62 we are right at 100. so now when you draw this it will depend who is drawing this sometimes what people will do is they'll draw just really literally just straight lines to connect the points all right so they'll do that so that's one way it's probably the easiest way to do it and sometimes they'll smooth it out so that they it can follow the data that you had so you know if they were a little bit closer to 58 you know you can smooth those things out so you know what you could do also is you know sometimes people will do it like this or they're just kind of smoothing this thing out now of course i'm not gonna so they will be doing something like that all right so that you have this kind of smoothed out curve instead of just straight lines. But this is basically an ogive, all right? So it's a cumulative frequency kind of histogram that you have. All right, okay, thanks for watching. It's been exhausting. Okay, we'll see you in future videos. Bye everybody, see ya.